Hey guys, welcome to my channel and the first of hopefully many videos on rack refrigeration systems. Today we're going to go over the anatomy and overall layout of rack refrigeration by using Hussman Super Plus Rack as an example. I chose this rack because it's what I learned on. It's simple, it's easy to understand, and it's a great template for any other rack refrigeration system you're going to run into in your career. Before we get into any of that, a little bit about myself. Five years ago, I worked at a grocery store. I was a kitchen employee and one night our cooler went off on a high temp alarm. Our evaporator coil was completely coated in ice and I took it upon myself to de-ice the coil with a hammer and a chisel. I emptied a rack that night, but it's okay. The company that came out was super chill about it. Instead of ripping me a new one said, hey, do you want to learn how to do this the right way? To that I said yes. And five short years later, I'm here pretending like I know what I'm talking about in front of all of you. Um, in all seriousness, I hope this video helps somebody. Rack refrigeration can be extremely overwhelming in the beginning, and there's not a whole lot of resources out there. So I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe and rock on, Dex. <laughs> Hey guys, so this is the animation that I made up for the Hustman Super Plus Rack. Now in this video, we're just going to go over the anatomy and the overall layout of the refrigeration system. And then in later videos, we'll do a more in-depth look at each specific area of the rack system. So with that said, we're going to dive on in. I kind of want to start with the receiver. Now, the receiver sits down below, kind of looks like two giant torpedoes. This is the side angle here. I'm showing you this because I want to show you how those two torpedoes are connected. We do have one on top and one below. This is so that we can draw vapor off the top for our defrost system and liquid off the bottom to run to our cases. Now here's those same two torpedo-like receivers that just kind of sit at the bottom of the rack. And drawn off the bottom of those receivers we have our 100% liquid that is drawn up through a filter dryer, a core filter dryer. After that, running through our differential valve and into our liquid header. Out of our liquid header, we run through a solenoid for each system. So in this case, we have seven systems. The liquid refrigerant runs through the solenoid into our liquid lines and out to seven different cases. Here's an example of what you might find in one of those cases. This is just a uh, basic layout of an evaporator where you have your red line, that's your liquid line, your 100% liquid running to the case through a shutoff valve. Sometimes this will be a solenoid as well into your metering device, out of your metering device, into distribution tubes. And this is where that 100% liquid evaporates into 100% vapor. And then it will travel back to the rack system through your suction line. Before we navigate back there, you'll see a little additional piping basically jumping around that TXD or that metering device and that is a inline check valve to allow for reverse flow during our defrost cycle. We'll go over that a little bit here later. But we're going to take you back to the rack system where those suction lines come back to the rack and into EPRs. Now EPRs are evaporator pressure regulators. These valves that control the EPRs are sorts. In this case, they have the solenoid. So sort is 
a solenoid controlled valve that opens on rise of inlet pressure and has a Schrader tap. So you have your sorts and your ORTs, and really the only difference is the solenoid stop. Following the EPR valves, our suction pressure is then dumped into our suction header. After the suction header, that suction pressure is then drawn through suction filters and then into the compressor. Now normally you won't actually find a physical filter in between the suction header and the compressor. Most companies usually like to remove those six months after install to get all the boogers and the my, uh, metal filings out of the system. The compressor then takes that suction pressure, it compresses it, and it moves it into the discharge line. Discharge lines flow into the discharge header, which then goes into the oil separator. Now on Hussman Super Plus Racks, they're very, very proud of their oil separator. They have a trademark, it's called a turboshed. And from that turboshed, our pressure goes one of three directions. Straight down into the oil manifold, which we'll go over here in a little bit. Out of the side into the bypass valve or the A8 valve, which dumps refrigerant directly into the receiver if pressure is low enough. Or that pressure can go straight up into the condenser. Now, in between your oil separator and your condenser, you're going to find a valve, typically. It's a split condenser valve. And what that does is it will isolate one leg of your condenser. It'll basically split your condenser in half. The purpose of this is to keep operating pressures during the winter months. So here's a look at what a condenser typically looks like. This is where your heat is going to be rejected. It's going to be outside, hopefully, usually on a roof, sometimes it's on ground level. But this is where we are removing the heat. 100% hot vapor goes into the condenser and comes out 100% subcooled liquid into the condensate lines and back down to the rack room. Now when we go into split condenser and we do shut that valve, this is what we're doing. We're taking away half of that condenser. condensate lines come back down to the rack room, to our rack system. And as you can see, they dump into the receiver. Before they do that though, they run through a A9 valve. And what this is, is a holdback valve. Now, the holdback valve and the bypass valve together basically make a headmaster. If you've ever seen a headmaster, you'll find them on remote condensers. These two valves essentially perform the same function as the headmaster. This holdback valve has a predetermined pressure that it needs to maintain. It's usually stamped into the body. On a 404 system, this pressure will be 180 pounds. So it will hold back the refrigerant in the condenser to maintain 180 pounds of pressure. Now back to this split condenser operation. When that split condenser solenoid shuts, another valve opens, bleeding the remaining refrigerant in the unused condenser back into the suction header. Now on either side of this unused condenser, where I've had these brown boxes that I think you guys have noticed, these are check valves, or these were my representation of check valves. These prevent refrigerant from flowing back into the unused portion of the condenser so that we truly only have half 
the condenser going when we're in split condenser. This concludes kind of the refrigeration process, and now we're going to start talking about defrost. So this is where we take off of the top of the receivers, and we flow into a separate header. This is the cool gas defrost header. Off this header, we have more solenoids. Now. This is something you're only going to really see on low temp racks. Sometimes you'll see them on medium temp, but typically you're going to find these on low temp racks, this cool gas or hot gas defrost operation. And what we're doing here is we're taking hot vapor off the top of the receiver and we're dumping it straight into the suction line just above those EPR valves so that when we go into defrost, our defrost solenoids open and our EPR solenoids close. And essentially, this is what's going to happen. That hot gas is going to flow in the opposite direction that we just went over. Now your fans are going to continue to run, they're going to run, they're going to run. That refrigerant is coming back through the suction now. That hot vapor is traveling back through the suction. And at some point, those fans are going to sense that temperature change and they're going to stop running because they don't want to blow hot air on your product. So you see, we kind of changed some things there. The vapor went back through the evaporator and it kind of condensed into a liquid. Now that liquid bypasses the metering device, runs through that check valve that we talked about earlier, back to the liquid line and all the way back to the case. And the way this is all happening is this differential valve that I talked about at the beginning of these slides. The differential valve never shuts completely. What it does is when one system goes in defrost, the solenoid will close it, but still allow pressure so that the receiver pressure remains higher than the liquid header pressure. You'll usually find probably a 40 to 60 pound difference when a system goes into defrost. The purpose of this is to allow that refrigerant to flow backwards so that 200 pounds being pulled off of the receiver is greater than the 150 pounds on the liquid header higher pressure is going to travel to the lower pressure. So that was defrost there, and now we're going to finish up here with the oil portion of the rack system. So we got a lot going on here, but this is going to tie it all in. Out of the bottom of the turbo shed, where we have that still probably higher pressure, we're pumping that oil that is separated out of the discharge down through an oil filter into an oil regulating valve that takes that high discharge pressure and steps it down to just a little above suction, typically, I don't know, 20 to 30 pounds over suction. This is pumping that oil. This pumps that oil into floats that are attached to the compressor. These floats house enough oil to be pumped into the compressor to keep them going. Additionally, out of these floats, we have what we call an oil equalizing line. Now, this equalizing line allows each compressor to have the optimal amount 
of oil. So we're not favoring one compressor over the other. They're all getting the same amount of oil as long as oil is there to give. All right, guys, I'm, I'm just as happy that that audio is over as you guys are, I'm sure of it. Um, as far as this video goes, I just wanted to cover the basics of rack refrigeration. Um, there will be some variation between the racks that you guys go on and Osmo Super Plus racks, they, they do have some add-ons. There's a, a heat reclaim option where they take the discharge lines and they run them through a makeup air unit. Uh, you can take those discharge lines and you can also run them through a water heater. Kind of just want to take advantage of that, that uh, free heat. Uh, kind of depends on what the store demands or who's installing it. Um, but as far as basic rack refrigeration goes, this is the layout that you guys uh, should expect. Um, the differences will vary from brand to brand because sometimes you'll have uh, water cool condensers or glycol, glycol cooled condensers. Say that five times fast. Um, and I hope to uh, do a couple videos on those soon. Um, but if you guys like this video, please give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope you guys have a great night.